A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, reading in the 27th chapter, verses 45 and 46. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eliah, Eliah, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I doubt that we encounter any more of the human side of Jesus than in this moment. A moment when he is hanging on a cross, nails driven through his hands, nail through his feet, left to suffer and to struggle for breath until he would die. It is a moment of extraordinary pain, a moment of extraordinary suffering. This is the human Jesus who is not given an excuse to be away from the pain of humanity. This is a human Jesus who is suffering the pains that any one of us would experience in a similar situation. This is a human Jesus who is between that moment of experiencing the painfulness of his own humanity, but also crying out to the God who had sent him to live and to work and to share and to minister among humanity. It is this Jesus who is in between. The moment of understanding the pain of humanity and the pain perhaps of all humanity and also understanding that he is a child of God and wondering where in that holy moment, in that painful moment, the God who had sent him to this place might be. I would imagine many of us have been in those in-between moments. The moments when we have experienced the pain of our humanity and yet having a vision of the God who is present with us. A moment in which we suffered and struggled in the midst of our own lives and yet understood that God had not fully abandoned us. And yet we wonder, we wonder where God might be if I am to hurt and to suffer in such dramatic fashion. So we cannot fully identify with Jesus, but we can get a taste, I think, of those moments that we too have suffered a bit in our own humanity have known pain, have, have even cried out from our suffering and from our struggle. I think we have all been there. Those absolutely dark, desperate moments when we have been unable to even see what is unfolding before us and we cry out for relief, we cry out for some kind of resolution, we cry, we cry out or some kind of intervention. Jesus in his humanity is in that moment. But bear in mind that in this moment, he is also bearing the sins of the whole world. Bear in mind that this is God's child who is hanging sacrificially on the cross for our salvation. Keep in mind that he is in that place because of our own brokenness. Keep in mind the pain that he must suffer on behalf of all of us. So it is a moment, a moment when the humanity of Jesus comes forward and he cries out in pain and desperation. Perhaps in this moment, we can hold Jesus close to our heart and give thanks and praise to him for his ability, his willingness, his capacity 
to bear this pain for all of us. About the man from Galilee I've heard some different things Some say he is a fisherman Some say he is a king doesn't look like royalty hanging up there on that cross. So defeated, bruised, so weak, his life and kingdom lost. As people gather round to stare, I hear the laughter and the jeers. While soldiers cast their lots to win the clothing this man wears. It breaks my heart to see his pain as tears run down his cheeks. And as the sky turns strangely dark, Earth trembles at our feet. Those who laughed, they ran away, ashamed now of their doubt. And even though in pain, through tears, the crucified cried out. from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. 
and they cast lots to divide his clothing. I met Sandra, a young pregnant gal, one Monday evening during the Emmanuel's House community meal. She was in need of a birth certificate to get her West Virginia ID. There were some other odds and ends she needed. Shampoo, please. Do you have conditioner? And toilet paper? And maybe a brush? I named some other items we had that could maybe help. Yes, please, was her response. And then she would smile. I was moved by her presence, calm and caring. Though in need, she gave. Somewhere in the midst of the sharing, we sat and started to talk about her unborn child. She was anticipating an ultrasound, anticipating finding out whether the baby was a girl or a boy. These things seem all so sweet and part of the beauty of life, to be a bearer of life to offer a bit of ourselves to a new creation. I might have asked if she had some names picked out, and I recall that she did, but I soon learned the reality that the child might not bear the name that she would give, for she was planning to give the child up for adoption. To my great sadness, this child was not conceived from love or kindness, not by Sandra's permission, but through the act of rape. I had felt so bad for so casually talking about the life within her, presuming the child was life she had desired, life she had chosen, life that she was going to name, embrace, raise, and love, life that would know her as mom. We couldn't help but cry together. Oh, humanity, how unkind you can be. I had no words for Sandra, nothing that could remove the pain or give comfort. She was and is stronger than I. What? Oh, what does forgiveness look like in the midst of this? I would see Sandra off and on the following month, the child within growing and receiving the love she could give. I wondered is this forgiveness when humanity, when the world imposes its brutality? All we can do is live. Live beyond the brutality. Live through and beyond and against the powers that seek to oppress. Live through and beyond and against the powers that seek to take and control everything of you. Live through and beyond and against the powers that seek to divide and conquer community. Powers that seek to divide and conquer communion. Father, forgive them. Was not Jesus' plea for the acts against him, but for the acts against Sandra and her child. Brutality that sought to diminish life, but could not be conquered by the very song of life that sang within and through Sandra, from her heart, from her spirit, from her child. Father, forgive them. 
was not Jesus' plea for the acts against him, the acts that would lead him to death, but for the acts that we do against one another, acts that we do against the rest of creation. The brutalities we continually impose upon those who we deem are different from us, who we deem are less than us. The fear that causes us to not listen, to not embrace, to not gather at the table together, but instead choose the sword over the plowshare, choose the bullets and bombs over the harvest table. The greed that rapes and abuses the very earth, our home, we are connected to and gives us life. Father, forgive them. Forgive them is Jesus' very words of life. Life that moves through and beyond and against all brokenness. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, reading in the 19th chapter, beginning at the 28th verse, and concluding at verse 30. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is over. Jesus' pain is over. His suffering for the sins of humankind are now over. There is relief in his soul. There is satisfaction that he has completed the task that his father has sent him to do. We come to this critical moment in our salvation history. This moment when we recognize the very end of the life of the Savior who came among us. We come to this moment with a full understanding of the pain and the suffering that was endured on our behalf. We, we cannot escape this moment. While there is a sigh of relief that the pain is finished, the pain lingers in our minds and in our hearts. The suffering continues to be there. Ah, uh, while we are grateful, we are absolutely ecstatic, in fact, that his pain is over, his suffering is done, his work is accomplished. And yet there is something in us that as we have watched and if we as witness to that which has happened, we cannot escape our sadness and our sorrow for all that Jesus has done. And so in this critical moment, when Jesus says it is finished, he's identifying all that he has accomplished in the midst of our lives. Our salvation now has been paid for by the very death and suffering of Jesus the Christ. He has given his all. He's done everything that he could have done. Is there not a great satisfaction for all of us when we have worked and we have labored and we have come to the end of the task and we can say, it is finished, it is done. And it is done well. It is done with all that I had to bring to it. And while we can identify our own joy in task completed and satisfaction on our lips, how much more great would it be for Jesus the Christ, the child of God, who understood that his work of salvation, this great moment in all of history is completed. And he can say, it is finished. I did my best. I gave it my all. I put everything into it that I had. I even suffered and laid down my life. And so the work that God has sent him to do is finished. In this moment, let us stand at the foot of the cross and let's recognize as we listen to these words that Jesus the Christ has given us everything that he had to give us, that he's offered to us everything that he could and that he laid down his life for us there on the cross at the very last moments we recognize our salvation has been paid for christ has died for us and now we can have new life because he has given us everything he had and so when he says it is finished we can look with some joy at what it is that God has done. But we can look at sadness, 
because of the pain and the suffering that it cost us. That it cost our Savior, that it cost our Lord, in order that we might be able to have new life. I read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verse 46. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. I think often of my dad's last breath breath that had sustained a beloved father, a beloved husband, a beloved brother, a beloved son, a beloved friend, a beloved servant. Breath that had boomed laughter and joy, breath that had embodied the essence of love. Breath 
that work towards healing and care. Breath that praised and served God with all being. And then silence. The breath of my father stilled, gone. The silence of life so deafening. The void that is almost impossible to fill. We know this all too well. Each of us who has released loved ones into the care of death into the care of stillness. We know it. We get it to some extent. It is a part of our very being, life, then death. The last words of love, the last burst of laughter, the last song sung, the last breath. We as a world are in the midst of this great reality. Loss, death, the last breath of so many right in our community. Sooner than we had ever expected. COVID-19 drawing it to us, to all of us, ever so clearly ever so horribly, ever so painfully. Mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, sisters, brothers. The last breath. Grandparents, uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews, cousins. The last breath, friends, colleagues, neighbors, strangers, the last breath, also cherished, and then the last breath, the stillness, the silence, the void. As I think about my father's last breath, I reflect also on Mary, mother of Jesus, as she witnessed her son's last breath, woven into remembering his first, breath that has stirred his first cry, a cry that awakened her mother's heart Breath that called forth his first laughter. Laughter that brought joy to her whole being. Breath moved from the core of his heart to his first words of love. Love that she would forever cherish. His breath. His breath on this earth would not only belong to her though, his breath, his breath on this earth belonged to the community. His breath belonged to the broken, to the downtrodden, to the forgotten, to the abused, to the abuser, to the oppressed and to their oppressors to the poor, to the rich, to the selfless, to the selfish, to the sick, to the well, to those seen and unseen, to the worn and torn. His breath belonged to all. He gave it, he lived it with his very breath calling us into a deeper way of being, a deeper breath, 
breath that could only sing love and grace. Breath that could only sing kindness and compassion. Breath that could only sing justice and reconciliation. Breath that could only sing humility and selflessness. Breath that could only sing forgiveness, restoration, peace. Breath that could only sing healing, joy, life. Breath that he gave to us. Breath that he invited us to partake in given, freely, generously. And then the last breath. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The last breath given to his father belonged, belongs now to the whole world the earth, to the universe, belongs now to all that was, is, and will be created, without no beginning, without no end. Amen.